dog. We have so much news for this video, but you know how we gotta start it off. It's update Monday! What's going on with you guys? The Cali Effect King of Games here, and it is one, two, three, four, five. I, I don't know how many weeks. I know it's been at least two months of kicking rumor toward arthritis' ass. When we first embarked on our journey, I wasn't even strong enough to be able to pinch weights with my fingers, let alone lift them. Now I'm not as strong as I used to be, but I'm telling you, I'm too strong already. So I have to give a mad shout out to my strength and conditioning coach, DR Fitness 702 If you guys just so happen to be on the Instagram game, check him out. He's like this tall and he lifts a lot, a lot, a lot of weight. I also have to give a mad shout out to my closer friends like Young Boy Striker, Eric and Gingy. You guys have been phenomenal and how could I forget the one and only Sabrina. Now speaking on the subject of Sabrina, this is what I'm saying when I have a lot of news. She's actually in the hospital like right now. Sabrina is actually getting back surgery right now. That video when I was talking about Book of Mooning her, yeah, that actually, I uh, may have took it a little too far. No, but all seriousness, Sabrina's actually had back problems her entire life, and it's a good thing that she's getting back surgery now. This is actually an advancement in technology, and it's a wonderful time to be alive, because now she'll have that problem that she's had pretty much her entire life fixed. So everybody that wants to drop some support for Sabrina, go ahead and post down below in the comment section. Without her, there would be no Cali effect. So I mean, by extension, she's a uh, she Cali effect. It's kind of insane how life has been for me and Sabrina going from her own health problems to my health problems to now both of them being addressed in 2021. But the most insane thing right now in Yu-Gi-Oh are probably these Yu-Gi-Oh decks that I'm going to tell you about. That's right, in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys some Yu-Gi-Oh strategies that are completely insane. You probably would consider playing them if you don't have anything to play or maybe you're looking for a really fun deck. So of course, if you wanna see more content like this, then be sure to destroy that subscribe button, but also go ahead and hit that notification bell because well, we just too strong. Also, if you guys are looking to play Yu-Gi-Oh! online, my Discord is actually going to be hosting Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments from now on. So go ahead and join the Discord and follow the instructions. It's going to be really insane as I'll be putting games on Twitch and possibly even revealing gameplay and deck profiles on my video. And even if you guys don't join Discord, it's okay. I'm actually going to be putting deck profiles that my Discord has provided for you guys on this video. So you'll be able to see a pretty good build before you start to get into to the deck. So without further ado, let's jump on in and talk about these insane Yu-Gi-Oh decks. The first strategy is not only a fan favorite, but one of my favorite decks, a deck that this channel just might be known for. Dino is still an incredible contender inside of this Yu-Gi-Oh format, even though the forbidden list had some changes for said strategy. It seems like Konami has finally read Misk and put it to limited on the forbidden list, something that so many players were asking for for quite some time. Unfortunately, for those glue eaters, that's not the end of Dino. Miss to one is nowhere near the kill shot that some players may have hoped to be, as cards like Pot of Prosperity and Living Fossil give this deck seven different ways to get to Misk before you even commit your normal summon. There's also Solid Operaptor, which allows you to add the Misk from your deck to your hand, and this card can be easily special summoned by destroying a baby Sarasaurus or Petit Pteranodon. That's pretty much just how the deck flows. The plan of Dinos has not really changed. When going second, you have access to one of the strongest boss monsters in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Not only can it attack every single one of your opponent's monsters, but it can also flip your opponent's monsters face down before they can make a Synchro, Exceed, or Link play. And then there are your utility dino cards, like being able to search Doggerin or Pink or Tops at will. This deck is really good at going second. But don't sleep on dinos going first. This deck did get Scrapter, which allows you to get off some insane Yu-Gi-Oh combos. I've made cards like Warload, Savage Dragons, and Notoria Beast on the first turn, all being protected by that Misk, which is still very searchable. Dino is nowhere near to being extinct out of the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh card game. You can actually say that it can soar past the competition if given the right pilot. A strategy that gets heavily underlooked but can actually make some huge waves, especially inside of this current format, 
is Mech Knights. Now, Mech Knights are a really powerful column-based deck that anytime there are at least two cards in the same column, you can summon these guys to your side of the field for free. Some of your most powerful Mech Knight cards generate you a ton of advantage, and it all starts with Mech Knight Purple Nightfall, which can banish itself from the side of the field to be able to add any Mech Knight card from your deck to your hand. The most amazing thing about this is that, I don't know if people have caught on to this, but uh, Purple Nightfall is a, a psychic monster. If you just so happen to banish Purple Nightfall on your side of the field while you have Cyframe Lambda on your field, you can at the end phase search a Cyframe Gear Gamma from your deck to your hand. Cards like Mech Knight Blue Sky can reward you with up to three extra Mech Knight monsters from your deck to your hand. And of course, Mech Knight Purple and Red can do a lot of dirty work by being able to destroy monsters and spells in the same column. And if you can move them with Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse, these cards are not once per turn. The thing that makes Mech Knight so insane is that it works amazing with Kaijus, and Kaijus were actually mentioned in my secret text video, you should check that out. Being able to stop one of your opponent's biggest threats and then gain advantage off of it by playing Mech Knights or even mixing Mech Knights with other strategies like Invoked is really, really strong. Now this strategy isn't going to take over the meta overnight, but as Mech as it is, it's a very viable competitor inside of it. Moving forward, another awesome deck at going second happens to be inside of a format where a lot of players use the extra monster zone. Cyber Dragons is completely bonkers right now, especially if your meta is fueled by decks that players have been playing since 2019. That's right guys, if your opponent just so happens to be playing a Sky Striker deck, all of their Sky Striker monsters just so happen to be machine, meaning that any summon of your Cyber Dragon monsters, you can morph it into a Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon. Cyber Dragon is also pretty good at dealing with back row, as Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon allows you to destroy cards on your opponent's side of the field, used for its fusion summon, and can also deal deadly by sending light monsters from your deck to the graveyard. Another strategy that Cyber Dragon just so happens to work very well against is Salomon Great. That Salomon Great Sunlight Wolf looks really good into a Cyber Dragon monster hits the field and then you... As a Salomon Great player, this doesn't feel good. Cyber Dragon also has a fairly good matchup against BBW, as they normally want to special summon Link monsters to their side of the field. They're gonna have to occupy that extra monster zone first, meaning that any of your Cyber Dragon monsters can take advantage. Cyber Dragons are also another one of those decks that can main a Kaiju and search it, so getting over some of the more problematic cards in today's meta is not too hard for this strategy. It's also another one of those decks that just so happens to have an Omni Negate in Cyber Dragon Infinity, extremely easy easy to make with this particular strategy and very easy to bring back through Cyber Dragon Naxter. This deck will also be getting support soon, so Cyber Dragon not only is an insane deck right now, I feel that it's going to be an insane deck when the new support drops. The weakening of other combo decks, I feel that this deck actually has a pretty good place in the meta. It's a deck that not a lot of players have talked about ever since Smoke Goblin Grenade of the Thief was banned, but Infernal Wolves are a fire Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Literally. The Infernoble strategy is based off of summoning those warrior monsters to your side of the field and being able to abuse the equipped spell mechanic. Esol Two Tales of the Noble Knight is one of your most important cards because not only does it add you a free warrior from your deck to your hand to use for later, it also can spell summon any warrior monster from your deck to your side of the field as long as you're sending equipped spell cards from your deck to the graveyard. Cards like, I don't know, Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, which isn't once per turn? Is it once per turn? Why wasn't this card once per turn? Infernoble, Ogier, and Oliver provide some pretty good support, not only serves as a means of extension, but while they are used as equipped spell cards, the monster that it is equipped to cannot be destroyed by card effects or targeted respectively. That means your most powerful Infernoble monster in Infernoble Emperor Charles can not only destroy cards on the side of the field, it also can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Infernal is also the last strategy to abuse Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. All of the other strategies have completely faded off, but this deck can make some insane boards using Aurorodon and of course the Mecha Phantom Beast monster that comes with it in Cobalt. Infernal is insane because with the right player, this strategy can be really tough to beat. It can play through hand traps fairly well and make some really difficult boards to overcome. And the last strategy I want to talk to you guys about would of course 
make young boy striker proud. Me and Meshack actually sat down and got some big brains together. I can safely say that Rocket Dragon Link is not dead. It's still an extremely powerful deck. With Guard Dragon OP being banned, not gonna lie, we pretty much anticipated that on happening. The bigger hit was actually losing Striker Dragon from Unlimited to one that actually made us rethink our entire strategy until we realized we've been having some extra support for a while. Rocket Dragon Link has definitely seen an evolution since its inception and has always been built on three core principles. The first is summon as many dragon monsters to your side of the field. I don't care if they're Thunder Dragons, I don't care if they're Dragonides. They can be anything they want as long as they're Dragon Monsters. The second is use those Dragon Monsters to your advantage. They ain't gonna sit there, they're gonna make some really powerful monsters like Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres and Boreload Savage Dragon. Those are staple Dragon Monsters that you'll summon to your side of the field. But the most important thing about Rocket Dragon Link as one of the better combo decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't let Hand Trap stop you. Even with the banning of LP and the limitation of Striker Dragon, Rocket Dragon Link can still pretty much do that. I noticed you guys may be excited for a Cali Effect Rocket Dragon Link deck profile, and if you destroy that subscribe button and get this video to a thousand likes, yeah, I don't see a reason why we can't do it. Well, that is pretty much all that we have for today's video. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Of course, there are also some other insane Yu-Gi-Oh decks. I want you guys to post down below in the comment section. Also, be sure to check out these other videos as I'll catch you on the next one.